So Josh, I have a, not a thesis, but I have a, an opinion that I think some people won't agree with. For me, this is as much uh, a job as it is a, a hobby. Like I enjoy using cameras, for photo, for video. And if I see a camera that I want, I want to try, I think in general, the consensus is if you're a Sony guy, you stay in your lane, you stick with Sony. But I kind of feel like you should be able to just go and buy whatever you want. If this is a hobby as well as a job. If I like that camera, I like the look of that camera, I should be able to get it. Like, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, you should be able to use whatever gets the job done and mm -hmm. keeps you inspired and makes you want to create. And I think that different cameras, uh, sometimes new gear also can help uh, break a creative rut in some ways. And that I'm not, I'm not trying to justify, you know, collecting too much gear like we all kind of do. But I think that, yeah, it's okay to change brands and change um, bodies and lenses and try a lot of different things. I think you're only going to learn from those experiences and become a better filmmaker by using different types of gear. You said a good word there, inspire. I don't know. I like. I think you, sh you really should be excited to use your camera, as you say. It should inspire you to get out there and make content and to film some stuff. And if you don't have fun using it look at other things like i just bought a fuji camera a couple of months ago the uh the xe4 i love the look of it had the x100v before and i like using fuji cameras they're fun it's great to play around with the film simulations like you don't get that with sony cameras i don't think people think that you should be able to do that but i think you can well i think part of it is it's usually a very expensive endeavor yes that's very true yeah i mean if you're using high-end glass i mean that's the other thing mm -hmm. too is it can be get very expensive and so some people will just be like, well, I'm going to lose thousands of dollars. Like, I can't. I have too much invested in glass. I hear that all the time. But uh, there's ways around that for sure. I mean, I just I just switch systems. If you wanted to swap systems, like what's your, like you just swap from Sony to Canon and you want to go and buy everything used. Like, how do you go about doing it? So there's a couple ways to do it. And uh, I firmly am a believer in buying used equipment in not just camera gear, but things in life. I mean, it's just... If you can buy something used and it has more life on it, like that's better for the environment, better for the planet, all those kinds of mm -hmm. things. Uh, there's plenty of stuff that just sits around and doesn't get used or goes into a landfill. So whatever we can reuse in general, I'm a big fan of. For buying used equipment, uh, lately I've been using Facebook Marketplace for local okay. sales. And also there's some good Facebook groups. And I've had some really good luck with that. There's a lot of scammers out there, but also it's pretty easy to tell who's legit and who's not pretty quickly when you start chatting with them. Uh, eBay, to some extent, I find some deals on there. You got to hunt around uh, and mm -hmm. be really careful. Uh, the one tricky thing is if you're buying a lot of these new bodies, they're hard to get used because they've only been out for a few months. Like if you're mm -hmm. trying to hunt down an FX3 or an R5 or you know something like that where it's kind of hard to get a deal. But for me, I bought most of my gear use. So when I go to resell it, like I don't, I'm not losing any money. Like if you buy it uh, a lens in really good shape and you take care of it, you usually get what you paid for it. Camera bodies, camera lenses, we're lucky in that they do hold their value very well. There's a lot of used things out there that don't tend to hold their value, but like you tried out a lens, didn't you? And then you resold it for more than you bought it for. Used, right? Was it the 1535? Yeah, so I just switched to Canon. I bought a C70. Uh, we could talk mm -hmm. about that a little bit too, but I think uh, I wanted to go with RF system because I used to own the, the R, Bef mm -hmm. and, uh, so before I, I went yeah. to the A7S 3 and I real I love the RF lenses. They're amazing. But on the C70, it's a crop sensor. And so uh, I tried the, yeah, the RF 15 to 35, which I've owned before, which I absolutely love that lens, didn't do what I needed it to do on that camera. So I got the speed booster and using EF glass, which is the best bargains out there are the oh, all yeah. the old, old EF glasses, all the L-series lenses. Like, they're beautiful. And there's so many out on the market. It's easy to find used ones for sure. I, th I think in my experience buying used, at least in Canada, the market isn't, it's not quite as busy, I suppose, is the, is the right word. Like, there's still a lot of people selling. But if I go into Facebook Marketplace, at least in my area, and search Sony lens, you might find like one or two a week. So you really have to start hunting. And I think that's when Facebook... Uh, groups come into play there and if you, let's say you're looking for uh, well, what you, what groups did you join yeah there's a couple of sony uh, buy sell groups and a couple of canon mm -hmm. buy sell groups you can find on facebook uh that's where i find most of the deals and don't be afraid to try to talk people down and get a deal you have to put mm -hmm. a lot of time in but if you do put the time in, you can save a lot of money i mean my it's worth it, yeah. my g master zooms i think i sold for what i paid for them 
um, and I used them for nine months. So it's a free rental. Basically, yeah. I mean, it, there is yeah. like no depreciation if you buy it used, uh, and you can't buy everything used. But when you can, I think it's it's a great idea. You just gotta be really careful about the. Uh, I'm just really careful about the front element. I, some people like they're pristine, and some people they're not. And you have to very specifically ask people that and look get pictures and and those sorts yeah. of things. If you buy a body on uh, eBay and it's the sensor's damaged or something like that, there's a little scratch or a mark on it. That's all of your video, all of your photos just ruined. So there's risks, but I think the uh, the risk is worth the re reaps the rewards, right? Like you can save a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, I was very careful. I mean, it was a big switch over. I was selling two FX3s and a bunch of G Master glass and switching over to Canon. So I just kept track of all my sales and everything I purchased and made sure that it worked out, and uh, it did. So I actually switched and didn't lose any money. So let's talk about why you switched because the last video we did, we were talking about how the FX6 um, wasn't a good camera and I canceled my order and I bought an FX3 and you had the FX3s and you were in love with them at the time. So what made you want to switch? I do like the FX3s a lot. Um, I was originally a Canon shooter uh, until I bought my A7S3 and that was the time when the R5 came out and the overheating and all that stuff. And um, I was just like, all right, A7S3, it's got all the specs, like everyone's hyping it up, like that's where I'm going. And I, ma I made the jump, but I really enjoyed shooting with Canon and I think I always will. And, you know, there's something about the look of the camera that it resonates with you or not. Like some people like the Sony image, some people like the Canon image. They're just different. They're just different images. Um, and I just kind of like the way Canon works. And I kind of overlooked the C70. I know in that FX6 video, we talked about how I've, I've wanted a cinema camera. I want built-in uh, ND filters, built-in yeah. XLRs. And I overlooked the C70 because it has a Super 35 sensor. When you have the speed booster on there, it's basically a full frame camera. And it has the sensor of the C300 Mark III, which is an $11,000 camera. And so when I started thinking about it more, I'm like, wow, I can get a sensor out of an $11,000 camera. And when you look at the FX6, it basically has the same sensor as a $3,900 camera. And so all of a sudden it was like, okay, uh, I just like how co compact it is. There's no handle. There's no X, uh, XLRs are on the body. I know they're minis, but like everything is really compact. And uh, I don't know, it just, it just got me excited again to start shooting videos. And so uh, I made the switch and I've so, so far I've been really happy with it. And you went in deep quick. Like you were texting me and uh, it seemed like over the course of a weekend, you just went, bought everything and then. You just were selling all the Sony stuff, so. Well, if I could afford to have both, like I would keep both around. They're both great, but to me, I'm just like I'm very trying to be really efficient with my shooting. Like I don't want to be picking up a camera and not think. Of, I have to think about it. Like once you get comfortable with the camera, like you don't have to think about where the buttons are, how to set things up, mm -hmm. and uh, I just want to go all in and just like that's my thing. I will say, uh, I had the R for a while, and like people on the channel here will know how much I love the R. I will say that going back to what you said earlier, there's something about Canon image. There is, but I think there's more something about using a Canon camera that feels different to using a Sony camera. It's not more enjoyable, but it just feels more straightforward. You feel more in tune with using the camera. Uh, do you, you kind of feel the same way? Like it's just an easier camera to pick up and use than a Sony camera is. There's less tweaking you really need to do. It's more, maybe not for the C70, but for the R, uh, R5, maybe the R. They're just a little bit easier to use in general. Yeah, I can't really describe it, but I, I shot a lot of videos on the R. That was the majority mm -hmm. of my videos on my channel for at least like a year. Um, and so I spent a lot of time with that camera. And I just, every time I picked it up, like I, w I was happy to pick it up. And I didn't feel the same way with the Sony camera. And I don't know why. It's hard to explain. Um, maybe it was just like my first love or something. But um, yeah, I really do enjoy shooting with those cameras. And Canon comes with lots of, um, lots of workarounds, lots of cripples lots of like things that you have lots to of cripples <laughs> that you have to deal with on a regular basis uh it's it's annoying and i think that's why a lot of people like switch to sony for sure yeah. I, to I, I did i totally get it so what are you like is there any big niggling problems that you've had to deal with so far that you're like uh, it's almost made you regret it a little bit or nothing that's overly bad uh I, with the c70 that once i figured out that the rf lenses weren't going to work for me um it's been it's been okay it hasn't really been that much time yet but so far i've the image is just the the dual gain output yeah the the dgo sensor is just so cool on that camera the video you sent me the other day where uh, i don't know if it's live yet um we'll link it down below the shadows is just you can see the gradient of black but you try and find somewhere where there's just nothing and it's just mush and you you can't 
you can see everything. There's detail in every little bit of the shadows there, which is really hard to get. I think with the FX3 or A7S3 or FX6, like you have to get the exposure pretty darn close for you to keep the noise under control and retain the highlights. But with the dual gain sensor, like it's exposing for the shadows and the highlights, you can actually expose into the middle or even lower if you want to keep even more shadow information. So it's uh, it's just a different animal altogether. It really feels like a much higher end camera when you start playing with the image for sure. So what you're saying is I should buy a C70. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun, Chris. We'd have a lot more to talk yeah. about. Uh, no, that, you know, that's 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 a lot to spend uh, for fun. But I, I do think we do get. It's very easy to get torn up in the the hype surrounding cameras, right? When new cameras come out, it's very easy to want everything that's new. Yeah, and most of the people are hyping up the newest camera, and you really have to think about what works best for you, what's going to get you inspired and excited, and the right tool for the right job, mm -hmm. and it may be a camera that isn't the most popular camera or it might be the camera that you already have and you don't need to upgrade or something like that. But don't fall into like everyone's using the FX3 or the A7S3 or the R5 or whatever the newest, hottest camera is. Mm -hmm. You got to you gotta like try some out, either talk to people that use them, rent them or buy rent them yeah. used and play with them for a while. But uh, yeah, just find the one that, that matches what you'd like to do and, and resonates with you. And I think the FX3 is the current on-trend camera for uh, on the hype train. I think a lot of people, I mean, I'm talking about a lot as well because I just got it, but I feel like that's one right now that everyone's really talking about and wanting to get, and it's hard to get hold of, at least here in Canada, but there hasn't been a camera like that in a while. What would we have had before the FX3? Maybe the, the A7S uh, when it came out. The A7S, yeah. Yeah, I think it's normally Sony and Canon, really. They're the only two. So buy, buy what you like. Yeah, don't be afraid to try. Buy what you like and... Uh, don't be scared to spend the money if you have the money, but don't go into debt if you need to, or you can't afford to buy it used.